Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can keep it off. Yeah. Okay, just okay. Good. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to the last day of this uh, conference. And uh, so it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Sung Yung Park from uh, Caltech on his way to UT Austin. He's going to tell us about uh, homological blocks on R matrices. Thanks very much. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, uh, th uh, thanks everyone for coming. I'm, I'm glad you're all here. Um, also, um, great thanks to the organizers for um, making this wonderful um, conference uh, possible. So um, today I'm going to tell you a story about homological blocks and R matrices. So homological blocks and R matrices are going to be the two main characters of this story. Um, well, a lot of you are probably familiar with R matrices. These are solutions to the Young-Baxter equation. Um, they're very useful in constructing invariants of um, knots and links. Uh, but homological blocks, you're probably not familiar with it. So um, I'm going to be telling you more about it. So um, just to put it out there, um, simply put, homological block, um, it's the machinery that produces some interesting Q series out of three manifolds. And um, so my goal today um, is to um, tell you what it is and what's known about it and uh, why it's an interesting thing to consider. And most importantly, I'll discuss some uh, recent progress on its mathematical construction um, using R matrices. Um, and this is a talk uh, based on these two papers. So here is a rough plan uh, for this talk. I'll start with an uh, introduction slash motivation coming from Chern Simons theory. And then I'll move on to explain homolog what homological blocks are, how it was first introduced in physic uh, physics literature, and then um, how it's mathematically defined for a class of three manifolds uh, known as negative definite plumb three manifolds. And then I'll explain um, how, um, how one can uh, define it, how one can try to define it on non complements, um, which is the conjecture by Gukov and Manalescu. In the last part of this talk, um, I'll talk about R, um, R matrices for Verma modules of quantum groups um, and using them, I'll tell you how to prove Gukov Manalescu's conjecture for a big class of links. 
So let me start from a brief introduction and motivation. So I'm turned Simon's theory defined by uh, Witten in 1989. Um, it pre it's a, a topological uh, quantum field theory that produces um, invariance of three manifolds. Now, um, 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 mathematically constructed by Rashtikin and Tribe, so now commonly known as uh, Witten, Rashtikin, and Tribe invariant. Um, it's, a, it's an invariant of three manifold um, that is defined for each choice of root of unity. When the three manifold is S3, and we put a Wilson line defect um, along a knot uh, with some choice of representation of the gauge group, in this case, SU2, um, then the corresponding invariant is known as the colored Jones polynomial. They're um, called polynomials because they are polynomials in Q with integer coefficients. And here, um, Q is um, e to the 2 pi i over k, where k is the uh, renormalized level of, of this uh, Chern Simons theory. Um, the fact that color Jones polynomials have um, integer coefficients, it was um, explained uh, by Kovanov um, in late 1990s when he constructed a homological link invariant, now commonly known as uh, Kovanov homology, which is a bigraded uh, vector space whose graded Euler characteristic recovers the colored Jones polynomial. Um, Kovanov homology uh, can be understood physically, for instance, in terms of BPS spectra of open topological strings or of a gauge theory. Um, and also on Wednesday, um, on the parallel session, Elise LePage gave a beautiful talk on, on, a, on an alternative um, approach um, based on an approach by Mina Aganagic. So some of you must have um, went, to, went to that talk as on. So, um, so a natural question is, uh, what about three manifolds? Um, uh, do WRT invariants um, carry some sort of integrality like color Jones polynomials do? Um, a remarkable example was found by um, Lawrence Zagir in um, 1999. Um, and uh, they studied this particular example of a three manifold um, point carry homologous sphere. And um, they found that um, there is a Q series, there is a power series in Q with integer coefficients, um, um, such that it, as you take the um, radial limit, so on a complex Q plane, imagine a unit disk. On the boundary, there are a bunch of roots of unity. Um, as we approach a root of unity from inside the unit disk, um, they've shown that it recovers the WRT invariant of the Poincaré homology sphere. And um, in that sense, um, this Q series provides an analytic continuation of the WRT invariants in this particular example. And in this way, we see um, that um, the integrality, that the coefficients are integer numbers. Uh, soon after their work, um, Hikami generalized their results for more general Zeffert manifolds, um, uh, pr uh, provided many more examples. So um, in, in these examples that I just said, um, integrality of the WRT invariants um, can be seen by analytically continuing them inside the unit disk. Um, like the picture I, I drew here. And um, homological blocks, which I'm going to be telling you more about soon, in a moment, um, whose physical definition was originally given in a paper by Kukov, Pei, Putra, and Batha, can be thought of as a vast generalization of these results. So um, let me tell you a bit about how Kukov, Pei, and Putra, and Batha um, introduced this um, homological block. So um, they considered um, the following um, setup. Um, so let's say Y is a three manifold. And well, this is a rather familiar setup for um, topological string uh, realization of uh, Chern-Simons theory. So we, we're putting um, 
uh, we're, think, we're considering the M theory space time, which is the cotangent bundle of Y times C times C times a circle. And we're putting a stack of M5 brains along the zero section uh, Y times, uh, the, times the origin times C times a circle. Here on C times C is a, as a Riemannian manifold, it's a top knot space with a U1 Q symmetry. Um, and, um, and the N5 brain inside the top knot space looks like a, a cigar, infinitely long cigar that gets rotated by this U1 symmetry. So um, one can consider the uh, BPS, uh, this, uh, the BPS subspace of the Hilbert space uh, once one specifies the boundary condition on, at the infinity of the cigar. And this is migrated by the U1R symmetry and U1Q symmetry. So one can take the graded Euler characteristic. And that's what this um, homological block is supposed to be. Um, well, I didn't say anything about the boundary condition at the infinity of the cigar yet, but um, Roughly speaking, it corresponds to a choice of abelian flat connection, or more precisely, it's uh, related to a choice of spin C structure uh, of the three manifold Y. Um, so for now, um, let's, for simplicity, let's say um, the three manifold Y has a zero first steady number, and let's take the, our Lie algebra to be SL2. Then um, Gukov, Pei, and Putra and Vafa in their paper, they conjectured that the WRT invariant can be decomposed into a certain linear combination of the radial limit of this Q series. So uh, more precisely, um, WRT invariant at this um, K3 of unity can be expressed as a sum over elements of the first homology group times the classical turn simon section times um, some of our spin C structures and some explicit matrix uh, times, um, times the radial limit of this Q series. So um, perhaps what's a little bit surprising uh, compared to the previous examples uh, given, by Don, uh, uh, given by Zagir, Lawrence, and others is that, um, so in case, uh, in case the first um, homology group of why is not trivial, then this conjecture um, suggests that if we want to analytically continue WRT invariance into a Q series, then we can't just do it into one Q series, but rather um, we need to do it um, in such a way that we get a number of Q series labeled by spin C structures. Um, of course, when, when the three manifold is, a, is an integer homology sphere, um, or that is, if the three manifold has trivial first homology group, then there's only one spin C structure. And in that case, um, this relation is supposed to be um, exactly um, uh, what, what the previous examples are. So, well, the, that was a rather um, abstract uh, uh, physical definition that's uh, not so practical to use. So let me give you um, an ansatz or a mathematical definition of these homological box that can be um, given very explicitly in, for, this, for the class of three manifolds known as negative definite plumb three manifolds. So um, plumbed three manifolds are three manifolds that can be naturally associated to a, a tree whose vertices are um, labeled by integer numbers. So given, given a tree like this, um, one can replace each vertex by an unknot and one can link, uh, uh, whenever two vertices are connected by an edge, one can link the two unknots in the simplest possible way. And as a result, we get a link who's, um, which looks like a chain of unknots, and um, each component is labeled by an integer number. Then one can uh, perform a Dane surgery, meaning one first take the one can first take the complement of this link in S three, and then these integer numbers tell you how to glue 
um, solid tori back into this uh, um, link complement. And uh, that uh, produces a closed three manifold known as the plumbed three manifold associated to this plumbing graph. Two plumbing graphs represent the same three manifold um, if and only if they are related by a sequence of Neumann moves, which are these three moves uh, depicted in this figure. So if one wants to produce an invariant of the, this class of three manifolds, it suffices to show that it is invariant under these moves. When the linking matrix, um, let's call it B, of a plumbing graph is negative definite, the we say the we call the resulting plumb plumb three manifold uh, negative definite. And for a negative definite plumb three manifold, uh, and and a and a choice of spin C structure on it, we can define the following Q series. So um, it may seem like a pretty complicated expression at first. So let me, um, so let me tell you what it exactly means. So um, we have a contour integral over variables x sub v, one for each vertex of the plumbing graph. And by doing this contour integral, what it means is that we're take, we're picking out the constant term of whatever is inside uh, in the integrand. In the integrand, the first term is some rational function in these x variables, whose power is to the minus the degree of the vertex. And here we also have a factor, which is a version of Jacobi's theta function associated to the quadratic form, which is minus of B inverse. Um, and since we are assuming that our plumbing graph is negative definite, this quadratic form is positive definite, and uh, therefore it gives a well-defined Q-series. Uh, yeah, I should also say that the label B here, it takes values in, in this set, which can be canonically identified with a set of spin C structures. And uh, this invariant can be, uh, this can be shown to be invariant under Neumann moves. And uh, therefore it, gives a well-defined invariant of, of this uh, of for negative definite plumb three manifolds. Um, here are a few remarks on this definition. So um, the uh, GPPV conjecture that relates the Q series with WRT invariants, it has been proven in many cases um, uh, in these references listed in, in these listed references, including um, all negative definite cipher uh, fiber three manifolds and some class of uh, non cipher fiber uh, three manifolds as well. They're also known to provide examples of quantum modular forms. Uh, quantum modular forms are, um, it's a notion introduced by Don Zagier in uh, 2010. It's uh, supposed to be in uh, a notion that uh, encompasses not only the uh, usual modular forms, but also uh, mock modular forms, uh, false state of functions, and uh, similar um, modular objects. And yeah, in these listed papers, references, um, uh, they've shown that um, this Q series provides a lot of interesting examples of quantum modular forms. Uh, you can find uh, you can also see uh, um, uh, for, uh, uh, you can also see uh, Francesca Ferrari's talk at String Map 2020. Uh, moreover, even though I've just given you a definition for SL2, this definition has been generalized to more general gauge groups. Uh, for instance, uh, you can see these references or uh, Pavel Putrov's talk at String Map 2020. Also, I think some of you must have attended um, Sachin Chahan's talk at the parallel session on Wednesday, where he also presented a result on uh, some uh, on a generalization of these Q series invariants to other gauge groups. Finally, um, there is there's also an interesting recent work by uh, 
Ross Ahmed, Chad Peter Johnson, and Slava Kushkal, where uh, they found a common generalization of these Q series invariants and Hager floor homology. Um, so, uh, well, uh, negative definite plum three manifolds, it's a nice, uh, easy to understand class of three manifolds. Uh, but uh, physics predicts that this homological box should be defined for all three manifolds. So we want to uh, we want to try to construct uh, mathematically the homological box for general three manifolds. Uh, for this, uh, we can uh, make use of the fact that, uh, but uh, the we can make use of the um, classical theorem in low dimensional topology that any three manifold can be obtained by a Dain surgery on a link in S three. So. In other words, uh, one can uh, study homological box for link complements, and then um, study how to glue back in solid tori along the boundary. That is to study the Dane surgery formula. And, and this is the approach initiated by Gukov and Manolescu, which I'm about to review. Um, so in order to state their conjecture, I need to first review um, as a theorem on color Jones polynomial known as uh, Melvin Morton Rosansky expansion. It's a, it's a theorem about a certain um, asymptotic large color behavior of color Jones polynomial. Uh, first conjectured by Melvin Morton and Rosansky, later uh, soon proved by Barnathan, Garfilis, and Rosansky. So set Q to be e to the h bar, where h bar is thought of as a small parameter. And we consider the limit where h bar goes to zero, and uh, which is the color of the color Jones polynomial, goes to infinity, while we uh, keep n times h bar fixed. In this large color asymptotics, um, this theorem says that the colored Jones polynomial has the following asymptotic expansion. The first, um, the constant term is given by inverse of the Alexander polynomial um, in variable x, which is exponential of n times h bar. Uh, remember, n times h bar is the parameter that we kept fixed, so it becomes an independent parameter here. And um, higher order h bar, uh, higher order coefficients are given by some rational function in x whose denominator is a power of the Alexander polynomial. Uh, what Gukov and Manolescu conjectured is that this Melvin Morton Rosansky expansion of color Jones polynomial can be resummed into a two variable series in X and Q. In other words, they conjecture that. Um, the um, H bar expansion can be, the H bars can be repackaged into Qs. Um, that is, uh, they conjecture that there is, there is a, there's a link, there's an odd invariant, which takes the form of, of a formal power series, which denote by FK of X and Q. It's a formal power series in X with coefficients in um, Laurent, uh, power series in Q with integer coefficients, um, whose H bar expansion, um, if we set Q to be E to the H bar, agrees with the uh, uh, Melvin Morton Rosansky expansion. On top of that, uh, they conjecture that this two variable series, um, FK, should be annihilated by the quantum A polynomial, uh, which is a Q difference operator. Uh, giving the recurrence relation for the colored Jones polynomials. And the main point here is that this two variable series, FK, should really be thought of as homological blocks for the not complement. Um, it's because they uh, pro also provide a conjecture on the Dane surgery. So consider 
um, P over R Dane surgery on the knot K. The resulting three manifold is denoted by S3 of P over R K. With some choice of spin C structure on this three manifold, um, um, Gukov and Manolescu conjectured the following form of a Dane surgery formula. So we start from the two variable series for the, for the complement of the knot K. Then we can multiply it by a simple factor in X and also a, a version of theta, fun, a, a version of Jacobi theta function. Um, and then we uh, take, pick out the constant term in this whole uh, expression. So this express, the expression on the right-hand side converges as long as uh, this coefficient in the quadratic form uh, minus R over P is big enough. And the conjecture says that whenever this right-hand side con converges, uh, that should give the homological block for the surgery three manifold. And uh, this is a, they've, they've shown this for surgeries on torus, they've proved this for surgeries on torus knots that results in negative definite plumb three manifolds. And it's a conjecture in gen for a general knot. So um, um, just to give you a sense of what it's like, uh, here's, an, here's an explicit example. Um, so take the three manifold, which is the orientation reversal of a brisk corn homology sphere, sigma 237. Um, it has many different descriptions. Uh, for instance, it can be thought of as a minus one surgery on the figure eight knot, which is drawn in this figure. And it's also a plus one surgery on, on the trefoil knot. Um, let's take the second description for now. Then um, homological blocks for the figure eight knot complement has the following exp um, explicit form. Um, expanded as a power series in X, it's a, it's a, it's a formal power series whose coefficients are uh, Laurent polynomials in Q with integer coefficients. Then the Dane surgery formula tells us that we can multiply this two variable series by a simple factor, expand it into a power series in X, and then replace um, X to the Whenever we, whenever we see x to some power, we replace it by q to that power squared. And we get a nice q series with energy coefficients. And in this case, it's a well-known q series. It's a well-studied q series, a Ramanujan's mock theta function of order seven. Um, and um, um, here, recall that this three manifold uh, has many different descriptions and um, these uh, other descriptions give the same result, um, which is a nice consistency check. Um, so uh, we want to tackle um, the conjecture by Gukov and Manolescu. And uh, there's a very nice approach. Uh, there, there's a very natural approach. Um, co since color Jones polynomials can be computed using R matrices for uh, finite dimensional representations of the quantum SL2. And since Bukov Malinescu's conjecture was about the large color asymptotics of the color Jones polynomials, it's very natural to study large color limits of these R matrices. Uh, so to explain in a bit more detail, let me briefly review what uh, quantum SL2 is. It's an associative algebra generated by EF and K and K inverse, uh, subject to the following three relations. In the limit Q equals one, it recovers, it becomes the usual universal enveloping algebra of SL2. And um, in that sense, it, it provides a, it provides a one parameter deformation of it. There is a nice sequence of finite dimensional representations, which I'll denote by V sub n. Um, there are um, irreducible n-dimensional representations of UGSL2, uh, explicitly in, in terms of basis, 
say v0 to vn minus 1, where v0 is the highest weight vector and vn minus 1 is the lowest weight vector, ex by raising operator, fx by lowering operator, and kx by an element of Cartan. And uh, here, these are uh, um, bracketed integers denote uh, quantum integers, which are uh, Laurent polynomials in Q defined uh, by this formula. UQSL2 admits a universal R matrix, uh, which in particular means that if we apply this to finite dimensional representations, V sub n, we obtain automorphism of the tensor product of Vn with itself. That satisfies the yang baxter equation, meaning um, the automorphism uh, we get from this diagram on the left equals the automorphism we get from the diagram on the, on the right. Um, and as a result, uh, we, obtain, uh, we obtain a representation of the braid group on tensor powers of these V sub n. And um, color Jones polynomials are simply a quantum trace of these automorphisms we get out of products of these R matrices applied to the uh, braid whose closure uh, gives the link we want. Um, so uh, now that we've reviewed the uh, finite dimensional uh, our matrices, we can take their large color limit. In the large color limit, these finite dimensional representations becomes a Verma module, uh, which will denote by V sub infinity uh, with generic highest or lowest weight, depending on our choice. The highest weight Verma module with the highest weight lambda, which will parameterize by log of X with base Q minus one, it has a basis labeled by non-negative integers on which the generators act in a, in a similar way to the um, finite dimensional case. And let's call the resulting R matrix for these Verma modules, the large color R matrix. Uh, notice that we, um, as opposed to the finite dimensional case, we, have, we now have two continuous parameters, X1 and X2. Uh, these are, um, in a way, an um, upgraded version of, of the discrete parameter um, n1 and n2, uh, which were the dimension of the representations we assigned to two strands. But here, uh, they're upgraded to a continuous parameter. Geometrically, the two continuous parameters, x1 and x2, uh, can be thought of as holonomy eigenvalues around the meridians of the two strands in SL2C Chern Simons theory at the Abelian branch. Um, so, um, diagrammatically, this R matrix element represents uh, the matrix element associated to this diagram. It's a positive crossing, and we also specify the holonomy eigenvalue uh, around the meridian of the two strands which are X1 and X2. And um, I, J, I prime, J prime, they label some choice of uh, basis vectors of the, Verma, of the highest weight Verma module. Um, a simple uh, but very useful um, observation is that while these indices I, J and I prime, J prime represent the basis vectors of highest weight Verma module, the R matrix element itself uh, makes sense for all integer values of i, j, and i prime, j prime, uh, simply because, uh, well, this is the uh, R matrix element that I uh, showed you in previous slides. There's just a natural way to extend this to um, not necessarily uh, uh, non-negative values of the in, um, indices. And, and there's a very natural um, diagrammatic interpretation of this. So um, from the point of view of state sum, at, uh, once we have these R matrices, we wanna sum over all the uh, internal indices, which were originally non-negative integers. 
But what if we invert the domain of summation of these indices from non-negative integers to negative integers? That would correspond to passing from a high state variable module to a low state variable module, uh, which uh, diagrammatically can be thought of as uh, changing the orientation of the arc of the link at the, with the, at the cost of uh, reversing, inverting the index. So as in this picture, whenever we have an arc in a diagram, which is labeled by a minus one minus i, that is equivalent to a diagram uh, with, a, with an opposite orientation and it's indexed by i. There are also um, natural cups and caps depicted in this picture. Um, so these are uh, pairings and co-pairings. Um, notice that in order to have these cups and caps, not only the index should match up on those sides, but also the holonomy eigenvalue should match up. Otherwise, the weight would be zero. So, um, so far I've introduced the R matrices, um, cups and caps, and they um, all fit into, fit together very nicely. Um, for instance, the large color R matrix enjoys all the symmetries that are natural from diagrammatic point of view. Uh, for instance, if we uh, look at this uh, diagram, it's a positive crossing with um, holonomy eigenvalues x1 and x2. And we label the end of the arcs by, so we, we um, inverted the indices on the bottom left and the top right. Now, as I said before, we can uh, invert the indices um, at the cost of reversing the orientation of that strand. So this picture is equivalent to the picture on the right. And we can turn this picture 90 degree clockwise and we get the picture on the bottom. Um, now we, uh, in addition to this negative crossing, we have, we have a cup and a cap and uh, the holonomies eigenvalues um, now becomes X2 here and X1 inverse here. Putting everything together, the diagram on the bottom evaluates to this value on the right-hand side. And in fact, the R matrix has the symmetry. Um, yeah, and, and R matrix satisfies all the symmetries that are uh, uh, similar to, the, to this one that are natural from diagrammatic point of view. Um, so uh, you might wonder why I, uh, uh, why I introduced uh, this notion of inverting some of the orientations. Um, 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 notice that by inverting some orientation of the arcs, we also get some non-standard orientation of some of the crossings, such as this one. So we wanna allow an orientation that can uh, change as it uh, goes past through, uh, through a crossing. And um, as I'll tell you in a moment, it's important to allow these non-standard orientations for better convergence of the state sum. Um, Verma modules are infinite dimensional. So the state sum we get at the end is, is an infinite sum. So we need to be careful about their convergence. And uh, let's say a link is nice. If it emits a link diagram with, with an orientation datum, such that the state sum given by these R matrices and cups and caps is absolutely convergent as a formal power series in X inverse with coefficients in the wrong uh, polynomials in Q. Um, then the main theorem of this talk is that uh, Kukov Manalescu conjecture um, on, on the existence of a two variable series uh, whose asymptotic H bar expansion agrees with the Melvin Morton Rosansky expansion. 
is true for any nice link. Uh, here are a few examples of nice links. Um, all homogeneous straight links are nice. Um, and also all fiber knots up to 10 crossings are nice. Um, let me explain what homogeneous straight links are. Uh, and I think it's best illustrated through an example. So in this picture, I have a fig I have the figure eight knot as a closure of a braid. Uh, sigma one, sigma two inverse, sigma one, sigma two inverse in terms of braid word. Uh, notice that in each column, here in the first column, all the crossings are positive. And in the second column, all the crossings are negative. Um, a braid is called homogeneous if for any fixed column, all the crossings appear with the same sign. Uh, so figure eight knot is an example of a homogeneous braid, braid knot. In this case, we can uh, choose, um, choose an orientation of the diagram given in this uh, figure on the right. Um, notice that I, we are using some non-standard choice of orientation here. Then um, we can use these R matrices, cups and caps uh, during the state sum. And then we get a nice convergent Q series uh, uh, formal uh, as a formal power series in X with coefficients in um, Lorentz polynomials in Q, which agrees with uh, what was computed term by term by Gukov and Manolescu. <laughs> Uh, let me say a few words about um, homogeneous braid, braid links. It may seem at first that they're quite a specialized class of links. Um, it's true, but in some sense, they are quite general. So it's a classical theorem by Stallings that uh, for any link, we can add an, ad an additional component of an unknot uh, with any desired linking number with each component of that link so that the resulting new link is a homogeneous braid link. Um, in particular, this means that for any three manifold, um, there's a link inside the three manifold uh, whose complement is homeomorphic to a complement of a homogeneous braid link in S3. And we know how to compute the homo uh, homological box for that uh, by, the by the theorem that I just mentioned. Therefore, um, if we, in order to mathematically construct homological box for general three manifolds, it suffices to figure out how to glue um, solid tori, that is how to do a general den surgery. Unfortunately, this, is, uh, this problem is still open, but uh, there are many hints available. Uh, so um, so um, hopefully we'll get there sometime soon. Um, finally, um, I want to mention a, a conjecture on fiber knots. Uh, based on many um, um, examples and also motivated from a topological string picture, I conjecture that for any fiber knot, the coefficients of the two variable series are in Laurent polynomials in Q rather than Laurent power series. In other words, that um, um, for any fiber knots, Melvin Morton Rosansky expansion can be uh, repackaged into a two variable series in X at form power zero in X, whose coefficients are Laurent polynomials in Q. Um, as, I, as I just said, part of the motivation comes from topological strings. This two variable series um, admits a one parameter deformation analogous to how uh, Jones polynomials gets deformed to Humphrey PT polynomials. Um, it's a setup in um, open topological strings, very similar to the old story of Ogre Waffa for Humphrey PT polynomials, except that we use the uh, not complement Lagrangian instead of the not conormal Lagrangian. So it's a Lagrangian that is uh, diffeomorphic to the not complement. And uh, what's special about a knot being fibered is that 
when the knot is fibered, this knot complement Lagrangian can be completely shifted off from the zero section of uh, S3, uh, just like the knot conormal Lagrangian. And we expect that um, everything is um, analogous to the conormal case. In particular, uh, just like conflict PT polynomials are polynomials, are polynomials uh, we expect that the coefficients of this two variable series are also polynomials, uh, not infinite series. Uh, let me finish with, by listing a few open questions. Um, of course, um, it's, uh, as I pointed out in the last part of this talk, if we have a general Dane surgery formula, that would produce a full definition of homological box, so that would be great. But even the special case of infinity surgery formula, I mean, infinity surgery is a surgery that forgets a component of link. If you know how to do that, then we would have a definite, we would have we would know how to compute this homological box for any link. Um, also, in the earlier part of the talk, I, I uh, described, uh, I explained the definition for uh, negative definite plum three manifolds, but it would be desirable, uh, desirable to find a formula that can be, that can be applicable for any plum three manifolds, whether or not it's negative definite. Um, another intriguing question is uh, if whether we can obtain this two variable series for fiber knots as some sort of trace of the monodromy maps induced to the Hilbert space on of the Zeichert surface of the fiber knot. Um, and finally, um, it's it, it's a it's a it's a second order question. Uh, once we have a mathematical definition of homological box. Uh, what would be the categorification? What would be the mathematical definition for the space of VPS uh, states? That would be an analog of the Kelvin homology for three manifolds. And uh, yeah, they, that, that would be wonderful to have. Um, that's the end of my talk. And thank you very much for everyone for listening. Thanks for the beautiful talk. We have time for questions. The the uh, approach you used for these uh, homogeneous braids, it seems that you could do this for other uh, groups. Did you did you focus on SL two just for pedagogical reasons, SU two, or could you the same construction um, work for? Yeah, um, I, um, I believe it should work for any other Lie types, and in fact. Uh, um, with with, um, with my collaborator Angus Gruen and and others, we have worked out the case for SLN uh, for for symmetric representations. And I guess the the difficulty for general Lie type is to get an explicit formula for these uh, large color R matrix, which is often very tedious. But yeah, but I believe it should be uh, uh, applicable for any 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 type of quantum. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so I have a question regarding uh, the uh, the partition function, uh, the FK uh, that you uh, in the last slide I think um, uh, you said uh, it can be interpreted as uh, the partition function of a topological string. Um, so uh, so is it is it possible to recover this uh, partition function using TR? Uh, or, or uh, yeah, or or basically any any uh, quantum array structure, uh, again using topological recursion. Uh, sorry, what what do you say? T T R. Topological recursion. Uh, topological recursion. Yeah. Um, uh, I I um, I don't know enough about topological recursion to answer this. Uh, but it, uh, can you use it to recover um, uh, Humphrey PT polynomials, for instance? Um, no, not oh, yet. Um, okay, then I I have no clue. Okay, there's another question here. Yes, uh, given the fact that these uh, FK polynomials, uh, well, uh, Q series seem to be related to Jones color Jones polynomials are also similar to Humphrey PT polynomials. For those, there is this 
famous uh, volume conjecture where the asymptotics gives you at the leading behavior the volume of the hyperbolic knot complement. Uh, I was just wondering if there is a similar geometrical invariant for the tree manifold that you get in this asymptotic expansion, or is it not known? Um, geometric interpretation of this th uh, three manifold invariant. Um, well, I, I, I don't know if this is an answer to your question, um, but uh, first of all, um, homological box should be thought about something associated to the abelian side connections or the abelian branch, as opposed to in case of in case of volume conjecture, it's about uh, it's about the hyperbolic uh, structure or the or, or, or the flat connection that, that, that corresponds to the hyperbolic connection, uh, hyperbolic metric. Uh, but um, uh, the, there's, there's an interesting story. Uh, there's an interesting result uh, recently um, appeared in archive in the past few years by uh, Zagir, uh, Don Zagir, um, um, Stavros Garfalidis, and, and their collaborators on uh, quantum modularity of a certain matrix valued invariant which includes both uh, some of the ingredients that I've mentioned. Um, so it's a matrix valued invariant um, and it has, it has a distinguished entry which agrees with the two variable series that I mentioned. And it also has some other um, information coming from other branches. Um, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to point, I don't know if, it, if this answers your question, but there, there's a story that involves both sub, um, all the branches not only the abelian flat connection. Okay, thanks. I think we have to move on. So let's thank again, nice to look for the talk. Thank you.